This is me again, Harold, uh, here sharing with you the latest updates to the Untold engine. Now, I realized um, a couple of weeks ago that the last time I gave you an update was about nine months ago. Now, I know that is a long time, especially since I work on the engine every day. But the reason why it took so long for me to give you an update and for me to release the latest you know, beta version of the engine was that I was also um, developing the first game with the Untold engine. So I was basically doing two things at once, uh, the improving the engine and also developing the first game. And let me tell you, that is, hard work. So uh, that's something for me to learn. I need to uh, balance that thing out. Let's talk about the improvements. All right, so uh, I, about nine months ago, uh, I recall that I shared with you this game that I saw on itch.io and it, it inspired me to develop my own uh, FPS game. I felt that it was gonna be easy and I also, believe that the engine was, you know, more than ready to do something like that. Um, well, it wasn't because there were so many issues that I didn't know that the engine had. Um, one of them was the following. Uh, for some particular reason, which I finally figured out, um, whenever you would switch uh, the game from the Mac to an external monitor, uh, the framing of the game would be off. Uh, and the reason why is because you needed to uh, detect the scaling, the, I believe it's called the back scale of the monitor. Uh, and luckily I was able to do that with the, you know, with the Metal API, uh, which, you know, once you, ha you have that enabled, uh, whenever you move the game from, for example, my Mac to an, an external monitor, everything would be centered right how it should be. Uh, so that was the main improvement that I did. One of the first improvements that I did. The second improvement that I did was um, I added uh, support, keyboard and mouse support to the engine. Yes, believe it or not, at that, as of that moment, uh, the engine did, did not have mouse or keyboard support. Why? Because most of the th games that I was kind of, you know, playing around with was with the game controller. So the ga the engine had only support for the game controller. Um, so obviously if I want to play a, an FPS game, I need a mouse and a keyboard. So that's what I did. I added support and everything in the beginning seemed to be working fine whenever I would, um, uh, basically rotate the character, uh, you know, it would move whenever I would move the mouse. However, I did notice that um, the mouse, uh, you know, would, you know, would scroll across the scene. And the reason for that is because I was taking the absolute movement of the mouse and not the delta movement. So I figured, hey, that should be something simple to fix. Well, guess what? I was completely wrong because it wasn't simple to fix. Uh, and the main problem is that there is not enough documentation uh, on how to do that when it comes to Macs. Uh, eventually, I was able to figure figure that out, um, and it 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 did work. But you know, here and there, I was I would have problems. Uh, the mouse would not be detected. Um, the motions would go all wild and off. I didn't know what that was. Um, eventually. Um, it turns out that it was my fault. It was my mistake, right? I had forgotten to initialize one of the variables that was dealing with the mouse and that was causing all sorts of issues. Uh, but once I got that fixed, you know, everything worked fine. So the third uh, improvement that I did was to improve the particle system of the engine. As of uh, version 12, um, you had to manually input that the particle parameters into the engine. And as you can see here, the particles were not that cool at all. And that was something that was bothering me. So I took that time to uh, improve the particle system. I actually rewrote the whole particle system completely. Uh, and on top of that, I also uh, made it more user-friendly in the sense that you no longer have to write down the particles parameter. Uh, the, the, the game engine now uh, is able to basically read 
the particles uh, parameters from the particle designer, the you know the application that I use to create the particles. So now all what you need to do is just simply you know select the particles that you want, change the parameters, export it, and the engine will take care of all of that, right? So that's the same thing that I did. Now the fourth one, and this is the big one that I worked on, was uh, the engine was taking a long, long time to basically load the models. Uh, for the game that I was you know, that I'm developing right now, it was taking. I'm not lying. I'm not kidding. Was taking. Uh, initially, it was taking over a minute and a half to load, and I'm like, the right uh, but I took that time to you know to dig deep into the code and I was making a huge mistake a very dumb mistake uh, and once I fixed that the the whole loading went from a minute 30 to uh, 14 seconds or 16 seconds now I'm very embarrassed to say that that it was taking that long but you know hear me out See, when I started developing the game engine, I knew very little about C++, right? Uh, and I also knew very little about computer graphics. Uh, so I made very dumb mistakes, and I, I made plenty of them throughout the game engine. Um, and I'm aware of that, right? But the whole point of this is that you need to see your work as constant improvement right it's not something that you just work on and then you stop and let it go no you need to always improve what you have done and realize that you know five years ago you were a different type of person right you were your you had a different level of knowledge but throughout this whole time you have gained more knowledge so now you can go back and fix what you did and that, that is exactly what happened um, it took me no more than five minutes to realize what I was doing wrong. Once I went into the rendering class and I found what was causing the, you know, the whole loading to take that long, I, I, I saw like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? That's so stupid, right? Uh, but I fixed it and that basically, you know, brought it down to 16 seconds or 14 seconds, something like that, right? But I, you know, 16 seconds, uh, you don't want to wait that long, right? So I had to work more on that. Now, um, one thing that I want to tell you is to all uh, join my Discord channel because believe it or not, you are going to meet great developers, very smart developers uh, that will help you and give you tips and guidance on how to develop a game engine. Uh, and one of them was Marco Giordano. Uh, I've been communicating with him on Twitter uh, I also watch his YouTube videos um, and he's a member of the Discord channel. So he suggested that one way of how I can improve the whole loading speed is to uh, not use the XML file format that I was using because XML is very slow to read and instead to write my own uh, custom binary file which is a lot faster. Um, and when I did that, guess what? The, the whole loading went from like 16 seconds to 4.5 seconds and now it's very fast I'm, I'm very happy of the speed um, all right so now the loading speed went down to 4.5 seconds but I wanted to improve that even further and I noticed that what was also holding it uh, you know making the, the whole loading kind of slow was the fact that I was actually um, computing the convex hull that is used for collision detections during the loading process. Yes, I know, that's, a, that's very dumb, but again, you see what happens when you have that mentality of continuous improvement? What I did five years ago was good, but now I know it's not good. But I would have never realized that if I had given up, if I had, if I would be the type of person that do, do not want to continuously improve. So. It is dumb that I was computing the convex hull during the loading process. So what I did was that I now compute that externally um, with this particular application that I wrote that also deals with the whole loading of the binary file system uh, for the 3D, 3D particles. So now the whole lo speed when it loads is really quick, super fast and looking good. Right, so uh, like I mentioned, this whole 
uh, update of the engine took a long time, uh, basically because I was also developing a game. And what you see here is the game that I'm developing. It's a you know FPS game. Uh, it has taken me a lot of work uh, to develop it, uh, not only on the technical side, but also on um, the whole game design. I am not a game designer at all. I really do not know how to make games fun. Uh, but you know, I took a lot of inspiration from actual uh, from the game uh, Doom. Uh, I, I really love that game. Uh, I know it doesn't look like that, but that was my inspiration. Um, this is basically what I wanted to share with you. Um, I'm still working on the game engine, and actually, let me share with you what I'm working on right now uh, on version 14. Um, the other two issues that I was having was that um, no, you know what? I'm I'm, I'm I'm gonna wait until the next release to share with you the other changes that I'm doing to the engine. But just know this, I'm, I'm constantly improving the engine. Um, I work on it every single day. I do not know how the heck I find time to work on the engine because you know, I do have a, a day job, right? I do work, uh, but uh, hey, sometimes when you love something, you cannot stop doing it, right? All right, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. I actually forgot to tell you this, but this is very important. Uh, do not forget to um, join my Discord channel. I'm providing the link in the description below. And also, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, you know, if you like this video, click the like button, subscribe, and thank you. That's all.